ladies and gentlemen, it is seven. So I'd like to call the meeting to order. And uh, Trustee Friedemann, if you would take our roll call, please. Trustee Shaw. Here. Trustee Church. Here. Trustee Graziano. Here. Trustee Dirty. Here. Trustee Friedemann. Here. Trustee Zabby and Hayes are her absence. Thanks. Oops. All right, very good. So You'll we'll join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, the God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Great. Um, any additions or corrections to tonight's agenda? Okay, hearing none, we will proceed to public comment. Um, Anthony, is there anyone in public comment other than for the students we have in the room? Is there anything to do? No. no. Thanks. All right, then I think we'll start with David. David, thank you so much for joining us. You know many of us in the room already. <laughs> And unfortunately, we have um, we have two people absent today. We usually do have a poll. We you know, usually have a poll, maybe one absent. But uh, today we have two. But thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. We are looking forward to taking action tonight on um, hiring David as our interim director. Great. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, well, my name is David Selleb, and I live in Lake Forest. My husband, John Chaloni, and I to Lake Forest about four years ago. He and I have been together for 18 years. Uh, we lived most of those years in the city of Chicago before moving up to Lake Forest. Uh, we lived there with our uh, two West Highland White Terrier, Leland and Sutton. Um, I spent my career uh, working in libraries, mostly in public libraries, um, 32 roughly years uh, working in libraries, the last 20 of which I worked uh, primarily as a public library administrator or director at various libraries from Blue Island Public Library in the south suburbs of Chicago to the Winnetka Northfield Public Library District, to the Indian Trails Library District in Wheeling and Buffalo Grove, uh, to the Oak Park Public Library where I worked until I retired in uh, February of 2022. So I've been retired for about two and a half years. Um, and, uh, for about four months, uh, a year and a half ago, I worked as the interim library director of the Lake Forest Library when its previous director uh, left to move to another state and another job and uh, before they hired uh, Ishwar as their, uh, as their new director. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, I also am affiliated, well, here in Lake Forest, I serve on the board of the History Center for Lake Forest and Lake Bluff, uh, currently serving as its vice president. Uh, and president-elect will serve as its president beginning next spring. And I also am affiliated with an organization called the Harwood Institute for Public Innovation. Uh, that organization was founded about 40 years ago by a man named Rich Harwood. And uh, well, it does many things, but uh, as simply put as I can, they do a lot of community engagement work and they go into a lot of communities around the country uh, that often find itself in crisis or facing serious challenges to help communities work through those issues. Uh, and I started working with the Harwood Institute when I was at the Park Public Library. And uh, about six years ago, I, uh, about four years ago rather, I joined the board of the Institute. And a couple of years ago, I started working as a, as a coach and consultant for the organization as well. And uh, I'm delighted to be here and thank you for your faith and trust, and I'm looking forward to helping you and the staff and the community in, in any way that I can, and offer congratulations to Renee. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you. I'll just, yeah. I'll just transition by saying, you know, I know that the, the team that did the recruitment, um, you know, three out of five of us were in touch with David leading up to tonight, or four out of five of us. Um, and I know what really impressed the team was the breadth and depth of your experience. And 
you know, kind of in a in a unusual situation, right? Where you're you're going to be our third director in two years and help us transition to our fourth director in probably two and a half years. Um, so we know that we'll really be tapping into that that expertise. We're going to have you join us. Thank you so much to the HR team who made it happen. We had a meeting. We said, you know what? If we really put the pedal to the metal, I think we could get an interim director hired in here for Renee's last board meeting. So right. thank you very much to the team who did some extraordinary things to make that happen. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. She wants to say um, well, building off of that, I just want to say how confident I am in David's abilities to help the staff and the board transition. Um, I also want to give my thanks to um, all of you that helped with hiring um, the interim director. Uh, and we sh we were trying to shoot for the stars and we really did it. And I'm just so um, pleased that David and I will have some time this week um, to do some onboarding and supporting the transition to make it as smooth and uh, supportive for the staff and the board as possible. Um, but also what I wanted to do briefly is just to thank all of you. Um, I wanted to thank the board first. Um, first of all, giving me this amazing opportunity to be director, to have the faith in me, to hire me from Minnesota and bring me here um, to take on this role. Um, as a new director, um, we've done so much together over the last year and a half. Um, a lot, maybe maybe too much. I don't know. It's been a busy, busy couple of years. Um, but I just want to say um, thank you for um, your collaboration, your spirit of um, openness and all of the ways, new ideas, the challenges, all of the things we've experienced together. Um, and I really uh, do appreciate this opportunity to work in such a wonderful community of Lake Bluff. Um, I also want to thank the staff. Um, the staff have been incredible to work with. They are the gem of this organization, um, and I'm so grateful to have gotten a chance to work with them, alongside them, and getting to serve this community. Um, so thank you all. I wish you all the best. Um, I won't be far, so if you're in Wilmette, please stop by and say hello. Um, looking forward to serving North Shore Public Libraries with all of you, and thank you again, board, for your service. The community is better and stronger for it. So thank you so much. Thank you. And as many of you know, we're having um, an event on Friday. Unfortunately, I don't think many people from the board will be able to make it. Um, but that's an opportunity for us to acknowledge and thank Renee for the impact she's had on the organization over the last 20 or so months, as well as welcome David. David's going to join us and he'll have an opportunity to get to know more of the staff beyond the one or two people you met during your tour and an interview with the HR committee. Um, so looking forward to Friday the 20th as well. Thank you. Any other public comments in the room? Okay. Um, then we are moving right into our first set of actions. Do they want to say public comment? Okay. All right. That sounds good. Well, there's someone who joined the meeting, but no public comment at this time. Okay. Thanks, Anthony. We have uh, our first action item, 6A, minutes from August 16th. Although, it says August 14th. Oh, this is a typo, I apologize. So they're actually the minutes from August 20th, the first um, attachment in your board packet starting on page three. Sorry about that. So would anyone like to move to approve the August 20th? I so move. Thank you, Trustee Jerch. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Graziano. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, carries. Brings us to our special meeting on September 5th minutes. Um, that one started at 6 p.m. It was only two weeks ago. I don't know about you, but it feels like a lot longer than that yes. somehow, some way. Would anyone like to move to approve these minutes? 
Thank you, Trustee Graziano. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Friedemann. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Janie and Sandy yeah. both abstain. So we have to review them again next month, the September 5th. Okay. Um, library director update. Well, um, for the last couple of months, my director's report has begun with staff updates. And as you have seen from this month's monthly report, um, there are there continue to be um, a variety of changes in our organizational um, chart. Uh, hiring new staff um, officially, Anthony. Um, began his position as technology manager in August. Um, two job openings were posted for our two part-time 18-hour library associate positions. Um, we are in the process right now of finalizing those, re doing reference calls. Thank you to Katie, who has led um, a fantastic hiring process for that. Um, during that time, um, interviews for the part-time youth services librarian position also took place. Um, and thank you to Eliza Jarvey um, for spearheading that process. Um, our newest uh, staff member will begin Thursday and will actually perhaps be at the party on Friday. Um, Julie Jurgens is going to be the, um, the new part-time youth services librarian, and I think she will be a wonderful addition to the team. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to thank the staff um, with our uh, several open vacant positions. We've really relied on other part-time staff to pick up shifts, um, and that has been greatly appreciated. Um, and uh, it was during the month of August that the Finance Committee voted to approve um, the increase of our um, position, our cataloging librarian position. Um, and uh, this position will move from 18 hours per week to um, full-time position starting October 1st. Hours a week oh, did I say, I apologize. Thank you for correcting me. 28 hours a week, I apologize, um, to a full-time position um, starting October 1st. Um, during this month, we also had a couple of other staff increase their hours based on the approval of the Finance Committee. So thank you again to the Finance Committee. Um, Karen Spanos and Marina Dove um, increased their hours as well as Julie Morowick. Um, and so lots of changes in the staff, um, but we are these are exciting changes that will add more hours to our organization to be able to help um, with desk coverage and making sure that we have um, customer service at a level of quality and we keep our building staffed at a safe level. Um, I also want to acknowledge Eliza Jarvey, who has entered into a new partnership with our Lake Forest High School um, with one of the special ed teachers um, to provide a volunteer internship for one of their students in their special ed program. Um, we actually have a paid employee who works approximately an hour and a half each week helping in the youth services department shelving. And this person um, started as an intern, a volunteer from this exact project. Um, and uh, Caroline is that person's name who is employed by the library. And Hannah will be joining the library as a volunteer um, to gain job skills, get um, opportunities for growth and learning and some community connections. So I'm really proud of Eliza for making such a wonderful partnership. And then also for the library to be really representative of the entire community um, and providing a great opportunity for job skills and um, uh, learning opportunities for our students in the community. Um, I do want to highlight on the second page um, uh, information about our collections. So um, the staff are working very hard at scoping the targets and the goals for our collection adjustment project. Um, as you may have heard from previous board meetings, the library worked closely with Angberg Anderson to identify or quantify the number of titles and materials in our collection to um, reduce our overall collection size um, by uh, over 10,000. 
And this puts us more in line with our peer libraries who have similar size um, geographic um, and square footage and also population. Um, this also helps us shift not only our spaces, but also our ordering to more support digital collections and adding more funds to um, ebooks and digital audiobooks. So the team is working very hard at coming up with procedures that are streamlined um, to withdraw the materials, pack them up, have them picked up. Um, in a small library like this, you really need everybody to work together to make sure the workflow is um, efficient, um, and they are doing that. Um, and so thank you team for doing that. Um, I also want to talk about um, actually, as we were mentioning Lake Forest Library earlier, um, the Read Between the Ravines program, which is our annual um, one book, two communities nonfiction read book was selected for 2025. And I just want to acknowledge Jillian Chapman, our community engagement manager, um, and also her collaboration with the Lake Forest Library team. They've selected a fantastic book by John Turner, Three Girls from Bronzeville, a Unique American Memoir of Race, Fate, and Sisterhood. They're in the process of identifying a facilitator for that event, um, and I'm really excited to see who they might bring in town. Um, so that will be a wonderful event. So save you the date for Friday, April 25th, um, and you'll find more updates shared from the library as things get closer. Um, but it's really exciting to see the communities come together in that shared reading experience. So thank you, Jillian. And just a quick comment. I see that the event will be hosted at the History Center for Lake Forest Lake Bluff. Yes. Um, and last year, I remember, well, the last, for the last two, three between the ravines, um, Renee's been able to secure copies for the board. So a little pressure there, David. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can make that. Work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read through this. I was intrigued by the book. Yes, it's it's just going to be a really important book for the communities to talk about. So thank you. Um, I also want to highlight a very successful summer reading program. Now, summer reading programs involve every single person in the library, from shelvers, because our books circulate more, to our programmers who are hosting in-person programs, um, to uh, you know the people at the desk who are helping people with checking in their reading and distributing prizes, um, providing those free books in the kids department or providing um, the gift cards in the adult department. Um, I wanna thank Eliza Jarvie who provided the data for what you will see is a nice trend upwards across the last three years for summer reading club here at Lake Bluff Library. Um, I'm really impressed with the amount of engagement that this library, we are small but mighty. Um, we are getting into the communities more um, and more and more people are participating in their reading program, in our reading program, to share their love of reading and learning. Um, so um, congratulations and thank you to every staff member who uh, participated in any aspect of service this summer. Um, it was an incredibly engaging summer. Um, and uh, thank you again to Eliza for putting together this great data. Um, I also want to highlight um, some information about our uh, technology and buildings. So um, in terms of technology updates, I'm very happy to say that um, our technology manager, Anthony, is off and running um, in his work to support the library in increasing our capacity and infrastructure. Um, in fact, just a small anecdote. Um, one of the pieces of feedback staff have been giving over the last several months, maybe more than that, is that when staff are on the BPN, whether they're at home or elsewhere and they're trying to upload documents, it's just been lagging and lagging behind. Anthony right away already identified the reason for that. Our upload network speed, our upload speed in the network is really slow, but our download speed is really fast. So we are upgrading our network speed, our upload speed um, to really improve staff workflow, which is going to change lives, um, especially for our, our designer, our communications manager, Jillian, and other staff who work remotely. Um, so thank you, Anthony. There's so much more I could talk about. Um, that's just one thing. Um, Jillian and Anthony did participate in a training with um, Net2 Community, who is our consulting service for our website. We do use um, a provider or a contact that helps manage most of our website, but staff internally have had some knowledge of making changes in the website themselves. But really we lean on the expertise of network 
Net2 community for their knowledge in Drupal, which is our um, how our website is hosted. And so the goal, long-term goal is to have more internal knowledge of how our website works so that we're leaning on that to community less and also reducing costs because the hourly costs of this provider is quite high and so having a dedicated technology manager and then also training both um, Anthony and Jillian will certainly help with that. Um, the last thing that I'll share before moving on to statistics is that um, the library staff will soon be receiving parking permits. Um, this has come up a lot in committee and board meetings and some IGA conversations. Um, and after um, a, a trial of a parking permit several years ago that didn't quite work, it was fading in the sun, I don't know quite the details. Um, one of the things I worked with Jillian to do is make sure that we had parking permits for all staff um, before my last day. And I'm very happy to show you the design of what it will look like, nice, bright, and visible. Um, and it will be received in the library very soon, and then it will be distributed out to staff. And then I assume David will work with Jillian to contact um, Matt Smizinski, who is our, um, our police chief, to let them know we have parking permits now. So if patrols were to increase in the staff parking area, that would be helpful for the safety of our library and our property. Um, so I just wanna thank Jillian on um, a great design to help improve safety and security for our library. Um, Renee, a quick before you go yes. to, I felt like you were gonna go to stats. No, I was, stats but no, thank data. you. So um, just one thing that I wanna make sure is also noted is, you know, today I was looking back at old monthly board packets. Yeah. Um, the building closures from the month of August. Mm -hmm. And yep. we were closed two days. We were closed two days. Two days. Um, and so the cause of that was as we brought in our um, uh, our HVAC vendor, Midwest Mechanical, is who we use um, and have contracted for a service for our um, many HVACs in our building. Um, they identified the issue um, and were able to fix um, both the fan and um, and, and so now my brain is elsewhere. So um, trying to identify the exact cause of this issue was several weeks ago. Um, uh, I don't recall, but it was um, involving a rodent. Um, and so uh, sometimes what happens is those out, outside units um, rodents will enter in and sometimes cause some problems. There were there was some wiring that needed to be replaced. A compressor that was the that was the word. Um, our compressor was replaced as well as a fan. Um, and so the first day was an extremely hot day due to the extreme heat that we were experiencing in August. Um, sometimes our building has a, a big difficulty cooling down in those days. Um, and so the first day we closed for staff and public safety. And then as I was assessing additional issues, the second day, that's when um, Midwest was on site and were able to um, fix it in an emergency situation. And we were able to open up again. Thank you. Any questions? I would just like to throw in there that I've had my clothes dryer give me down twice by rodents getting home. I think there were questions about, you know, can we make our HVACs um, rodent proof? I did follow up that question with our um, our HVAC company. It's, as they said, it is just um, nearly impossible. They will find their way into small crevices anywhere and they will do damage. And, um, you know, there are some larger holes just designed in the unit for venting and all of that. And so um, it is something that they run into on a regular basis. Um, it has nothing to do with the age of our units or the design at all. Um, so maybe not the, the best answer, but um, the answer nonetheless. Oh, thank you for reminding that. In terms of statistics, this is we're still only about four months into the new uh, data spreadsheet. So I encourage you to continue to share feedback with um, our interim um, and with management team if there's suggestions that you would like to see data presented in a different way. I know there is a recommendation to find a way to add, um, what was your and Bill's suggestion? Like a trending line. Mm -hmm. So um, haven't been able to implement that yet, but that could easily be done. Um, August is a relatively slow month in building for us because of so many vacations. 
um, take the, that families take place in Lake Bluff. Um, and the two week weekdays we were unexpectedly closed. As correct. Well. Yes. Yes. And so at the same time, though, um, it actually was more than I had expected. You will actually see things like our wireless sessions were higher in August compared to June and July. That tells me a little bit about how our buildings were used. Our adult computer sessions were way up in August as well. Um, so, you know, there were people who used our building, so I was pleased to see that. Um, and in general, you know, this is now that the data is presented this way, I look at this fiscal year as kind of a new, a new foundation, a new, a new year to set um, kind of a data uh, standard or like a new standard for data so that you can compare it year after year. I think the last four years our data was so variable with the pandemic and closures and staff in and out. Um, I think libraries you'll find are um, uh, certainly settling down in their data. They're looking at more trends across year to year and they are seeing increased visits um, beyond this library. Public libraries are seeing increased visits now. So I think Lake Bluff hopefully will see the same sort of trend. I don't have anything else to, to share for the director's report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I have a quick question about passport applications. So yes. how many people do we have today who are processing passports? One. Okay. One. And that's Katie Horner, our um, reference. And, and there's not someone else who is able to do them but doesn't have the capacity like, no. who's been trained to do them. Okay. No. Well, Anna was previously trained, but it's no longer her job. So Anna's hours were reduced. Exactly. Um, and so we only have one trained um, for certification. It's not up to date. Yeah, that's correct. And it's not for, for um, school. Correct. And David, David, so you know, um, the Lake Forest, as you may know, may, may know, the Lake Forest Library does send people here when Lake Forest residents call there to ask for passport support. They typically come here. And then we have only one person here who can support that service and that demand in the community. And now North Chicago is a brand new location. Um, they're a passport agent and they have several staff on um, in their organization dedicated just to the service. So we often, staff um, often uh, refer people to North Chicago if we can't support the need. There's also something new that I just saw that came out um, in the last seven days, it says you can renew your passport online. Um, um, they beta tested that before, yeah. um, and that is only for adults who have had a passport before and are renewing it um, no more than, or within five years of its expiration date. Mm -hmm. or it can't have been expired for more than five years, essentially. Um, those adults um, are eligible. Um, Usually what they do is they renew by mail. Those are um, applicants who we can provide the forms for. We can look over the forms, but State Department regulations do not allow us to do anything else beyond that. Um, so we don't, um, they, we encourage them to not make appointments with us because we can't collect an execution fee for those applications. We can't mail them out like we would for a brand new applicant. Um, so it really, um, so the online service is intended to make it easier for those applicants, um, but it doesn't affect people who uh, do not meet those calls, those, um, right. those uh, bullet points. So. Right. I, I think I've, I've heard in previous discussions that it's often someone who's moving from a child passport to an adult passport that get serviced here? Is that yeah, that's pretty frequent. Um, or just kids who need to have their passports renewed. Um, applicants who may have had a passport in the past that's been lost, that's something other one, and of course, we have Great. I'll, I'll forward it to the Lake Bluff Library Instagram account. That's where I saw it, just so you can see. It's, it's, it's suggested, the post suggested, that they were expanding that program in some way. Yeah. Good information. Yeah, that's probably Thanks. based on their beta test. Of yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments on the director's report? All right. Thanks, Renee. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. Okay. Financial reports then. He would walk us through. Yeah. 
So in front of you, you have the um, August revenue and expenditures report. Um, we are continuing to see property taxes a little ahead of schedule. So, um, you know, Bill would note if he were here that we are over 50% received for the year. 55.92% of revenue has been received there. Um, we did have a personal property replacement tax payment. So that's the PPRT. Um, so we had a payment just this past month. Um, I do want to mention that um, interest earnings continue to be strong. Um, there, haven't, there hasn't been too much uh, change in terms of interest rate, but what I was talking to Ishwar at Lake Forest Library about recently was that over the next year or so, even in Lake Forest, they are trending um, and moving to a different way of um, supporting their financial cap their capital. Um, and that might be something they're actually moving away from Illinois funds um, because apparently they are not FDIC backed, um, which was surprising to me. Um, and so that conversation was happening a lot or is happening at Lake Forest and with the village. So they're looking for another opportunity for investment, I guess you could say. And so just wanted to put that on the radar of the board and, and with David here. Um, now, do I still think Illinois funds is really great and has a really high rate of return? Yes, the village utilizes Illinois funds. And so um, I just know that as things change, you know, with the, that interest rate, there might be other opportunities to explore in the future, perhaps. Um, in terms of expenditures, um, we are right there in terms of spending for our staff salary. So we are a third of the year done and we are a third of the way spent. Um, what I would say is for the next, you know, six months, I think those lines are going to be variable. Um, the finance committee has voted to overspend the library's budget to add staff hours and add benefits. But as with staffing transitions happening, there will be some savings um, incurred from the library. So I would say that that's kind of a moving target for the library and over the next couple of months. Um, but in terms of uh, where our spending is, we're, we're right there. Um, we uh, have had some um, bills this month in terms of needs for the building. Um, our we, we continue to receive invoices from Engberg Anderson for the strategic facilities fund. So that's what you see there under professional and contractual for the $4,600. Um, you know, we did just print a beautiful new newsletter. And so you'll see the cost of that um, was charged here as well. Um, I'm also going to just share a little bit about an email I sent to the finance committee um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I have been working with the management team um, to identify um, cost savings for our library, specifically related to our collection lines. And with the intent of budgeting for next year, a lot of our print collection lines will be reduced to go in line with the overall collection adjustment project that we have. There's no sense in budgeting for the same amount of print if the whole overall goal for the library is to reduce those collections. And so the managers received um, some direction um, in terms of which lines to underspend based on the collection project. Um, and then also with the um, with the spending trends tending to be more needing more needed for digital collections. Um, we're expecting a cost savings in collections this fiscal year, somewhere around twenty five thousand dollars. Um, and I would say that in many ways is, is a result of these budgets being inflated over the course of the last 10 years or so, where this is just more of the same adjustments that you saw us making last year, reducing the print collection lines to be more in line with where we're seeing in terms of usage and sort of in terms of what we're seeing in trending. Um, and so as David and the staff work with the board for budgeting for next year, um, I just wanted to give you a heads up about how some of those lines will look different, but also this year you'll see some cost savings um, in the budget. Um, so not to be surprised when you see budgets not being spent completely, that's been intentional. And I, I think perhaps now's a good time to also add that, you know, a, a book that the library purchases and puts on the shelf, say it's a bestseller, might cost $20. Roughly. But 
to make it available online for people to get the ebook. I believe some, I, but I believe it varies by publisher, but it can be like one price and then a per usage price. There are different pricing models. Yeah. Um, so as our community continues to trend toward electronic um, usage of the library's collection, that's going to change the cost dynamic of maintaining the collection significantly. So I don't think a lot of people really appreciate that. I think Jillian might have done a post recently about something. I think it was. I think I did that one. Some, I shared an article, article yeah. yeah, on our story. Um, to raise awareness about the pricing structure for ebooks and digital collections and how they are not always advantageous for public libraries. Experience right. right. process. There is a um, a case going to the Supreme Court about this. So um, maybe in the future it might change. Um, but currently, as it is, um, you know, libraries do have to uh, pay more for ebooks. Right. So I, I do know there are some people in our community who get both the hard copy and the ebook. <laughs> Happy to answer any other questions for revenue and expenditures. Um, basically the overspending, especially legal and contractual, those were known um, entities at this point. Go through the grants. Grants. So we received, um, I believe this month we received our accessibility grant, um, which was the $45,000 plus we received per capita grant totaling into $49,350. Um, so um, many thanks again to Trustee Friedman who um, supported our application for the um, remodeling for accessibility grant. Um, and so that money is there earning interest. Um, so is there a motion to approve the August financial report? So moved. Thank you, Trustee Church. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Trustee Jardine. Trustee Shaw? Aye. Trustee Church? Aye. Trustee Kessman? Aye. Trustee Jardine? Trustee Friedman? Aye. Thank you. Um, that takes us to the check report. Um, so the largest amount paid this month is payment to our medical insurance, which you may have recalled in the last couple of months, we haven't had payments to our medical insurance, which is the same um, process we've been trying to work with our accountant on fixing so that we could have regular payments reflected on our um expenditure report every month. However, it looked like um, there was a catch-up payment uh, requested um, in the amount of $19,502.94. Um, and so that is for the library signatures. Yeah, and so again, that line, um, when we went through the financial report, shows medical insurance 22.7% for the year. So the catch up. Yeah. Can I clarify uh, the check register has a starting check as oh. 16176. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Great. Any other comments on checks, Renee? I can jump in there. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, we tend to get, um, we tend to purchase our eBooks and digital audiobooks as soon as we um, receive the per capita payment. As you may remember, our per capita grant goes 100% to audiobooks and e and digital um, eBooks. Um, so that's why you see a front loaded cost. Um, you'll also see a higher than normal net to community cost, but that's to support our technology manager um, in learning and helping manage some of the website. Um, nothing else out of the ordinary, but happy to answer any other questions. Hey, any other questions on the checks? We can't do this one. Um, yes, yeah, so they're actually ready to go and they'll be mailed out on Monday when Laurence is back. There are no questions on the checks. Is there a motion to approve? 
I will move to approve the August 2024 monthly check disbursement numbers 16176 through 16206. Okay, thank you, Trustee Church. Is there a second? That was Trustee Friedman. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Trustee Shaw. Aye. Yeah. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Graziana. Aye. Trustee Journey. Aye. Trustee Friedman. Aye. Okay. Fantastic. That takes us to the committee reports. Um, so I will report out on finance and technology. Mm -hmm. um, so we met and the focus of the discussion was really about the upcoming 25-26 budget um, submission. As you guys may remember, when we submitted a 24-25, we actually did a two-year budget. 24-25, I think, was a 5% increase. 25-26 was also a 25% increase. 5%. Do I say 25? It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> you might be thinking of what you want to do. Yes, yes. Um, so we're, we're now, like, just beginning the budget cycle for the next year. It'll be a one-year submission, to the best of my knowledge. Um, and as Renee mentioned before, she um, also walked us through the plan for 24-25 to underspend slightly on collections that will help with some personnel costs, maybe some building costs as well. Next year, um, we have for 25-26 kind of the base budget, which was the 5% submitted, but then we're also going to do another um, version of the budget to consider what would it look like should we make um, significant investments in building personnel, Ebooks, ebooks, and thank technology. you, and technology. So, you know, the, the base budget is kind of trudging along on the same trend line, 5%. Mm -hmm. This would be, what if we were to transform in those areas? You know, marginally, not, not a, a big, big uh, building investment, but marginally. Things like maybe something to reinforce the HVAC so that we're not closing when the building's too cold or closing when the building gets too warm. Um, so, so there'll be two versions of the budget created, if you will. Um, another way to look at it is kind of there's there's the original one and then there's a key plus, plus minus this week. We'll mostly be pluses, not minuses. Um, and from there, um, the finance committee will determine uh, whether we go to the village to request a truth and taxation hearing. Um, I think this may have happened once in the last 15, 20 years at the library where a truth and taxation hearing was held. Um, we will also say that the, um, you know, we, we have agreement with the village that we have the ability to set our own levy, right? We have the letter from Mary Bergander, say her name correctly, mm -hmm. um, states that the library is exempt or excluded from the ordinance, the, the village ordinance that ties us to PTEL. Um, so there's a path, there was a path where we could request something outside of the PTEL cap. Um, and I think we'll just have to assess where we are in terms of the feedback and the um, climate of our relationship with the village at that time, I think will also need to be considered. It's not the only thing to consider, uh, but I think it will need to be considered. So we're, you know, doing things a little differently as we have been for the last 20 months or so. <laughs> I, um, to echo your comment about accommodating, not accommodating, but taking into account the climate and kind of temperature with the village currently, um, and where we are in the process of coming back to them with a larger ask for non tax levy purposes. Um, that we, with this sort of pause we're engaged in with the strategic facilities, I feel like we may discuss this part of consideration. So, if not, we do that, that's like. When we're prepared to like really launch it, yeah. right, right. I mean, what one of the things we've consistently heard from the village when we've been talking with them about the renewing the IGA or establishing a new one, really, um, is we want you to come back with the big number, the big result from the strategic facilities plan, an IT plan, it's an operation plan. Um, so there's there's some 
considerations we need to make about do we make a near-term operational ask? We, we've tried to do that sort of in our discussions with the village so far and the IGA, they have been very successful. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything from finance and technology. I don't think there was anything else. Um, Jamie Racklin will attend the next meeting um, on October 1st to support the finance committee in uh, fact finding and gathering information about the levy process as it pertains to all possibilities. Any questions from finance and technology? Okay, takes us to HR. Um, so the HR committee met on uh, August 29th. Bonnie, are you still on that? I mean, I know you're hitting the visitor, but you're, are you still listed as a member? Special guest appearance. When we named, when we named committees at the beginning of this fiscal year, she was named, but if there's a change that needs to be made, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what we really met was to discuss the transition um, from what we were planning, our plans for uh, bringing leave. So we had talked about our timeline for the interim director, so that was helpful. Um, and then we also um, took a pause from talking about uh, entering a recruiter. And we decided we would do that after the interim director had, uh, we had that discussion. Jenna. All right. Thanks, Jenny. Yeah. Thank you to Allie for being in the room. Incredibly helpful. Yeah. All right. Um, those are the only two committees that met last week. Um, takes us to new business. So first action item under new business is um, vote to approve the appointment of David Seller, thank you, as part-time temporary employee in the role of interim director for the Lake Bluff Library. Excuse me? Are you ready for a motion? I'm ready for oh, a motion. Yeah. I will vote to approve David Seller as the part-time temporary employee in the role of interim director for the Thank you, Trustee Friedman. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Georgine. Um, let's do a roll call. Okay, Trustee Shaw. Aye. Trustee Church. Aye. Trustee Graziano. Aye. Trustee Georgine. Aye. Trustee Friedman. Aye. Great. Okay. Yeah, it's a visual now. Fantastic. Great. That takes us to our next item then, which is our hours of operation. Thank you. Yeah. So um, first, I, again, I just want to start off with some things. Um, it took a lot of faith in um, the staff and I think also uh, my leadership to back in January launch what was the beginning of a pilot hours um, at the November meeting of November 2023. Um, the board discussed the assessment of our hours of operation assessed um, analysis of staffing, um, assessed the analysis of some pinch points and challenges the building and the library organization was having at that time. Um, the original pilot was six months. And then um, at the June meeting, which does feel like a very long time ago, um, the board uh, voted to extend the pilot with modified hours, reducing another evening and closing one hour early on Thursday. That decision was made after discussion based on data um, that was presented throughout um, each month of the pilot, um, both usage data, um, staffing data, um, anecdotal, quantitative, qualitative, a whole host of data. Um, and so what you have before you is, um, first I wanna, talk about the quantitative data, data 
Um, on in section nine of your board packet, you have um, the modified pilot report, which shows you all the data from the initial original six month pilot, um, and then that dark line demarking the two um, the two time periods. Um, you'll see the data from July, August, and um, September. Note that the data for September is only through um, September 15th, which is a Sunday, which is when this re these reports were run. Um, so it really only is half a month's worth of data. Um, so I want to identify um, some trends and just some observations that I have had looking at this initial um, reflection of data, again, starting on section nine um, with the, um, the teal graph. Um, or the um, the table. So what I'm noticing is that we are seeing um, a lot of the same types of trends, just at a larger degree. Summer is our busiest time of year. We have the most programs. The sun is out later in the day. So we do see more activity approaching later on in the day. Um, and so what you'll see is very strong numbers for July, similar to June. But as with libraries, those numbers tend to trend down in August, again, because of um, vacations and family schedules. And then September can kind of go either way with the beginning of school and just people getting into a new routine for the season. Um, but what I am seeing consistent is that the four to six time period continues to be um, a very strong time for the library compared to the six to nine. Um, and I want to say for the modified pilot, it's really six to eight. It's only those two hours. Um, I am very happy to report that our staffing has stabilized um, for the last three months compared to the staffing situations we were dealing with in the original pilot. Um, so you can see the leave percentages at the bottom of the table um, compared to what you see um, in July, August, and September. Now, when I started collecting this data, we talked about how this data really had never been assessed before. We didn't know on average, you know, what it was our target in terms of planning for X amount of leave each month. Um, so I'm really pleased that the board and um, the management will be able to have data now going back as long as they have to see um, what the library was experiencing in terms of leave. Now, you know, there are a variety of reasons for leave, whether it's holiday, you know, just in August, um, excuse me, September, you'll see an increase in holiday time usage. That's for Labor Day. Um, you'll also see the same thing in July. That's for July 4th. So some of those um, accrued leave uh, types are um, cyclical, but not always steady month to month. Um, some are a little bit unpredictable, such as sick. And as you may remember at the beginning of last year's pilot, um, we were really reeling from a variety of illness at that time. Um, and then, you know, I am pleased to say management and staff are able to take their time off now more than maybe when they were when they first started. So people are using their time off, such as their vacation, um, to be able to take their time off. Um, the addition of leave um, in this uh, table is PLAWA. So the board approved PLAWA at the December 2023 20, board meeting. That's the Paid Leave for All Workers Act. Um, and uh, even though we didn't have to as an organization, we could have been exempt from uh, moving forward with that because of the size of our organization being too small. Um, the board, um, I really just want to commend the board for supporting um, time off for all workers here at Lake Bluff. And so you'll start to see um, in July, August, and September, some of that time being taken. It does accrue one hour for every 40 hours work. So it's a relatively low accrual rate, um, but staff are starting to take their time. And so, um, you know, this is, again, just a snapshot of some of the data that you see um, specifically with leave across the last nine months, um, you know, with uh, turnover rate approaching 30% as of about a month or two ago, um, and with some recent turnover decisions, you know, I think the library, if you all want to continue to evaluate this data, that would be, you know, a recommendation to David and the staff to present that to you as any decision that is made by the board tonight moves on. 
Um, so the next section, section 10, is um, all the heat maps you could ever want from January to September 15th of this month. Um, and so, uh, you know, one thing I do want to remark upon is that um, the, the, not the, yeah, it's the scale at the bottom. It does change month to month depending on the average um, usage traffic. And so you might remember we in, installed a new traffic counter in October of last year. We didn't have this detailed data before. We didn't have any way to track hour to hour usage, um, but we do now. And so I think one of the things you're seeing is um, again, afternoons are really, really popular. After school time continues to be a really, really important time for um, attendees. Also Saturdays. I think that has, you know, one of the things that I remember the board discussing with the initial consideration of the pilot was, well, if Sundays are going to be removed from the schedule temporarily, you know, would we see that increased usage on Saturdays? And so I would say that you absolutely are seeing that. Um, we'll get to comments in a second. Um, but the other thing that I would say is consistent across all the months is that um, evening hours are really slow. Um, we don't see attendance in the library, um, and I think the decision to close at 8 on Thursdays was a smart one. It gives us an extra hour earlier in the day to help with um, breaks and lunches for staffing, um, and we're just not seeing the usage at that last hour of the day. Now, the Illinois Library Association um, puts out their standards of practice and best practices for libraries. Um, it always, uh, in, regardless of the size, they recommend at least one evening a week, and if you can have it, at least some weekend hours. So um, we are certainly square in the middle of that recommendation right now. Um, and so moving on, I'm just going to share with you um, section 11. Um, these are some of the, not some, these are uh, the comments that we've received across the last um, three months. Um, we have noticed that you've heard me say we've noticed a considerable decrease in the amount of questions we're getting about the pilot, the amount of comments we're getting about the pilot. Um, I think that we did see a little bit over the summer because people tend to use libraries seasonally. Not everybody comes all year long. Some people only come over the summer. So I really haven't, the library hasn't received a ton of written comments. Um, but as you can see, this um, also reflects both the you know the um the positives and the negatives um of the current hours and so um that's the data are there any questions or um about the data and then i was going to move on to my uh, to the recommendation hey I, I just have a question about thursday night um so when we modify the hours for the pilots mm -hmm. Um, there was discussion that we had around adult programs in the evening. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is twofold. One, which months would we likely see the most adult programming in the evenings? And how many adult programs roughly? You know, is, is August one of those popular months for adult programs? Eliza, you're on the call still, correct? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Can someone go upstairs and trade with her so she can okay. come down? I know right off the top of my head, I can say in August, um, the decision was made to host that program, um, that adult program virtually. It's actually a really highly attended program that we hosted. The Native Gardening? Correct, okay. yes. And so for a variety of reasons, um, adults tend to still like virtual programs. We just are offering less than we did. It's on my computer, but I don't and know. And so offering a virtual on program is the ability to host it at a time yeah. that works best for the adults mm -hmm. and not have it tied to an in-building, right. which is great. Um, the upcoming partnership program that we have, the upcoming partnership program that we have with the museum, 
Those programs were scheduled on Saturday, Saturday afternoon. And so, could you repeat the question? I heard it. Oh, I oh, sorry, okay. it just didn't come through the audio for some reason. So, um, you know, in general, August is really light programming month for us because so many, for us, because so many people are out of town. We don't tend to go heavy on the programming, and it can be really inconsistent in terms of the attendance that we get. However, we had at least one, which was a fully virtual program, landscaping with native plants, was in August. So I think we're going to be averaging around one evening program per month for adults. Um, and so far, and one of them is actually in November, going to be virtual again. Uh, Taylor Swift's literary lyrics, we're expecting probably slightly higher than average attendance for that one, based on the popularity of the subject. Um, but we have been able to work around the pilot hours, and we seem to still be seeing a similar amount of attendees. And, and Eliza, the numbers that you mentioned, does that include the, I think it's Illinois Libraries Project? programs those are just in-house yes sorry those are ones that we uh have coordinated with the presenter ourselves to present um the ilps are fantastic because they actually require extremely little from us in terms of staffing in order to offer them to our public so that's even more to our yes. monthly average of programming okay thank you thank, thank you, you. Thank yes is that program about these very get forwarded I yeah. will follow up on that with you. I don't remember off the top of my head. I, I, I came in the state of the was an in building program. For registered programs, we do have reminder emails set up to uh, remind people. Um, when virtual programs, though, especially those emails are key. And so every programmer is a little different. Some uh, presenters, thank you so much, Liza. Some presenters will allow their program to be recorded and then for hosting rights. Um, Jill, I think, was about to say something because I know she'll often be the one to upload it to YouTube. Um, I can't recall that one in particular, but we do get that question all the time for almost all of our virtual. Even with the Illinois Library Presents program, not all of those programs are recorded. It really just depends on the author and the presenter. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Which is back, I'm sure she'll agree. So, um, oh, sorry. Any other questions or comments about the data of the pilot? So um, I'll be brief uh, in terms of my recommendation. My recommendation to the board is to extend the modified pilot. Um, my recommendation is a collaboration with the management team and our discussions about the current staffing capacity. Um, with my upcoming departure on Friday, um, David's uh, um, onboarding um, as interim, and then the board's um, embarking on um, hiring a consultant for hiring a permanent director. Um, I think that this is a time where there is a lot of flux. Um, I do want to just say out loud that you all received um, information today about our own uh, Katie Horner has accepted a wonderful position at a new larger library. Um, and Katie, her position is unique in this discussion because she oversees the scheduling and the management of um, the service desk on the first floor. Eliza oversees the scheduling and the management of the lower level floor in the youth services department. Um, we currently have two part-time positions vacant. We are in the process, as I mentioned earlier, um, these positions are to staff the first floor desk. Um, these positions, uh, are in the process of getting reference calls. And um, our goal, we've already talked about transition planning for Katie's position. Our goal is to get them onboarded as soon as possible in the building to start training before Katie's last day. Um, Eliza also has a new staff member, as I mentioned with Julie Jurgens. Um, and so there is going to be significant training and onboarding for their um, teams as well. Um, this is a time of intense fluctuation. A lot of organizations, all organizations, go through times of rebuilding. And what I would say is this is definitely, it feels like this is Libra uh, Lakebook Library's time of rebuilding. Um, I, I personally um, have talked about this with the management team, and we feel, um, we feel confident in recommending to the board uh, an extension of the pilot at least six months with a recommendation of consideration for a full year. Um, I do think that that would only so support the staff 
and also the new director and getting to know the library and helping understand and reassess um, the staffing capacities for the community. Um, and so with that, um, I will defer to the board for discussion. Um, perhaps we could start the, the discussion with any feedback that Bill or Matt provided. Yeah, I do think because they're not voting members, it's best to share their feedback after the discussion so as to not to sway um, the conversation. That would be my recommendation. The floor is open for any comments. Um, one observation I have is that I just noticed extend modified pilot hours so you don't have an end date. So the motion was not written with an ND in there, so okay. to create the space for the board to identify that. Um, I will say, given the sort of fluctuations of change um, for stability's sake, I would also agree that extending pilot hours makes sense. Um, now that we have our interim director onboarding on a four to six month timeline, um, I would be in favor of six months knowing that a reevaluation would happen um, at that six month period, which may coincide either at the same time or slightly after or before with a new full time director. Um, but I don't think growing a reasonable set of hours and all of that they right now would be a good use of staff time to manage that when there are a lot of other priorities that need to be managed. So say I agree with Brittany's recommendation. Um, I would be in favor of a six month. Uh, again, like we did before, the opportunity to review the data monthly, take a look at the six month mark. So six months over this too. March 31st. Thank you. I didn't do that right. <laughs> like at the wrong date there. All right. Thank you, Trustee Freeman. Other comments? Can we say six months and then it goes earlier? Is it possible? Or do we have to wait six months? It would require a new board action to end early. However, I do think that my, my recommendation to change that mid pilot would be very difficult from a communication standpoint and a staffing point. It seems to me that with all the uh, transitions that are gonna be happening in the next few months, uh, starting Friday, uh, that to keep things more or less status quo will make things easier for both uh, the staff and the public as well. Uh, I do very definitely want to leave us room to revisit opening again or reopening on Sundays. Uh, but I think we have some more work, some other work that we need to do with the for that route to some policy. So and what Janie is referring to is the fact that currently our personnel policy does state that Sunday hours are paid to staff time and a half. Um, I've already shared this with the policy committee and perhaps even in a board meeting. My recommendation is this library move to um, paying Sunday hours as straight time. A lot of libraries are and have moved towards that. We see that data in um, the annual reports that we get from HR source and IFLAR. Um, more and more libraries are paying their staff Sunday hours um, as straight time. So uh, we did talk about the pilot hours at the finance committee meeting, and I'll share with you my opinion that I shared there. It is the same. Uh, it's actually similar to what you said, Janie, which is I'm disappointed that we're not at a time point today where I feel that we have all of our ducks in a row um, to offer Sunday hours again. So I do support uh, extending the pilot for six months. That's our position. Jenny or Sandy, would you like to? I completely agree. I think that we just need to take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Um, Um, so, uh, Bill Hayes, our treasurer, um, is not here, uh, and is not a voting member of the motion that will be soon put on the table. Um, however, I did want to read the message that he shared with me. He said, um, after inquiring, uh, his perspective, he said, my input for the pilot program is that I would like to see us move to Sunday hours, but until we have a plan that works for our library, we have no option at this time to continue the pilot program. When I reached out to Matt as well, Matt Zaudi, um, who was on our policy committee, um, as well as our finance committee, um, he said, um, same as Bonnie, reluctant, yes. So is there a motion on the floor? I will move to update the library's hour of operations in extending the modified pilot hours for six months. Thank you, Trustee George. Is there a second? second. Thank you, Trustee Georgine. Seconded. Um, let's do roll call. Mr. Shaw? Aye. Trustee George? Aye. Trustee Graziano? Aye. Trustee Georgine? Aye. Trustee Schumann? Aye. Aye. I just want to say I think that um, the decision tonight, the unanimous decision tonight, will provide a lot of relief and trust in the staff of the board. Of the board. Um, so with everything I've been saying is I want to try and help the staff make as smooth of a transition as possible. I think that the vote that took place just now definitely shares that message, that same message with the staff. Um, so thank you for considering the recommendation. Thank, thank you, Renee, for all the prep. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, all right, uh, that takes us to new business. Item C, the calendar of board meetings for calendar year 2025. I've been really trying to close up a lot of loose ends before I go and make things just super, hopefully easy for David and the team. Um, this is your list of regular board meetings for the year of 2025. This is helpful having early um, because we are going to embark upon designing our winter newsletter very soon. So having this information would be helpful for posting that information. Um, and so uh, this is the list of dates and times recommended because the board voted to cancel the December meeting in 2024. Um, we are, I, we are proposing the same thing just to be in line with what you all proposed. Um, but of course that is up to the board what you should decide um, for your meeting dates. So it looks like most of these dates are the third Tuesday, except November and February. Correct. And so, so no November, I think, sorry, I interrupted you. You're fine. Um, November, I know historically the board has met the second week because oftentimes the third Tuesday is up against Thanksgiving on a Thursday and many people go out to town, have guests, whatever. So in looking at this, November looked a little, I just wanted to confirm that, that was the right, um, the right Tuesday, the Tuesday that avoids Thanksgiving. So I'll start at the top of the schedule. Okay. So um, January 14th is actually the second Tuesday yep. of the month, and that is done again to mimic the schedule that you all developed this year. Um, so you moved up the January meeting a week because you didn't meet in December. Because we're not going to meet this December. Correct. Yes. Correct. Um, February 11th might actually be a typo, um, but I don't recall. Um, I'm going to lean on the managers who helped me with developing this. Was there a reason this was the second week and not the third week? For what month was it? February. Um, this might be an error. Yeah. So um, the third week of February in 2025 is February 18th. So that should have said 18th. Sorry about that. Um, but yes, going to November. Um, Head in 2025. So the 27th is Thanksgiving. Correct. And, and the 11th is Veterans Day, so the bank holiday of that matters. Like the library isn't closed, so yeah. yeah. But mm -hmm. I didn't know if that's something. I mean, you all could consider it. <laughs> Just noting that. Yeah, no, that's good to know. But of course, it's ultimately you know, what, what works for you all. And I'm, I'm going to throw out another. I mean, so Tuesday, we're here and the library's closed. 
should we consider Thursday? We're here on Tuesday nights, and right now at 7 o'clock, the library's closed Tuesday at 7. There would be some extension of the hours, of the open hours anyway, because it has to be a public, the library has to be open for the board to meet, so it would have staff stay beyond the 8 o'clock, but moving that um, could help facilitate easier operations. But I, that wasn't what we proposed, just to keep it the same. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'd mention it, put it on the table, see if there was any reaction to it. I am fine with keeping it on Tuesday, but you know we do have a lot of staff here tonight. And they're closed. I don't know if it makes I think it this was a special one because David was here too. I'd love to be there. I don't know how strong something in. I think whatever is easiest operationally is great, but if there's a three day weekend, it would be the Monday that would be off. I, I don't really know. I mean, usually they make a three schools at least make a three day weekend out of that. Aren't always out of Veterans Day. Yeah. Out of, yes, I, I'm actually. I had actually put on the table the possibility of moving shifting from Tuesday night, third Tuesday night monthly board meeting to maybe Thursday when the library is open. The only other thing I could think of is that because. We opted to stay open one evening a week for programming. It does remove one evening a month for Anna for adult. Yeah, okay. to use this the, space. the third um, the third Tuesday is actually the eighteenth of November. Yes. yes, right. But we yes. moved whatever the board wants to do. We okay. moved it up in our proposal. But that's fine. The eighteenth, and then Thanksgiving was it until. A week and a half later, or something. So, I, I would suggest going for the 18th just to fix. Yes. Would it be helpful to go from January down to December just to see if you have consensus on this? Um, so, he, here's where here's where I understand the conversation has led so far. No, I don't feel a lot of momentum toward Thursday. Totally fine. Personally, I prefer Tuesday. Yeah. Totally fine. We've corrected February to be February 18th. That's the third Tuesday. I think we all know, sorry, I'm going a little out of order. January is the 14th because we're not going to meet in December of 2024. We're going to go all the way down to November. Make that correction. Make it the third Tuesday, which is the 18th of November. I think, I think we've covered all that so far. Cool. My next question is December of 2025. Sandy's, Sandy's, <laughs> Sandy's liking the idea. We've got special board meetings. We've got emergency board meetings in the last year or so. Yeah. I, I also prefer to plan. No December. Jamie says yes, too. So then is there a motion to approve the 2025 regular board meeting dates as we change them, would you like to? Yes. I will. I will be happy to make a motion. Yes. Uh, but we have made two changes. Uh, one was a typo, Tuesday, February eighteenth, twenty twenty-five, and the other is just um, uh, to be consistent with the third uh, Tuesday of the month, November eighteenth, twenty twenty-five, and also because Thanksgiving is late enough that it doesn't impact. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. So I will I will sort of all of that. All of it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Trustee Jordi. Uh all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. We have our meeting dates for 2025. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. That. Now we have closing dates. <laughs> Again, just tying up those loose ends for you. Um, so this is a list of the proposed library closing dates for 2025. Um, this integrates our continued process of um, opening late on Fridays, the third Friday of each month, to allow the staff to meet as we are tomorrow or Friday for our monthly staff meeting. So you'll see those reflected here. Um, 
You'll also see reflected here, closing on Easter Sunday. Um, that's not a paid staff holiday, but that is what this library has traditionally done. Um, this incorporates the closures of other federal holidays, not all federal holidays. I do want to identify some research we did, again, like we did last year, um, researching what other libraries are doing in terms of Juneteenth. Um, because for the last couple of years, um, libraries have started making decisions either to open or close on that day. Um, some of the more um, administrative buildings, such as Rails or the Illinois Library um, State Library, they are closed on Juneteenth um, as they are driven by federal holidays. Um, but what we're noticing is that in favor of access, a lot of public libraries in the suburbs are staying open. Um, and so that is why you don't have a proposal on here to close Juneteenth. Um, if there was that proposal, that would require um, a board um, change of the policy to add Juneteenth to the paid holiday. So, you know, with a closure, you would want to consider that too. And so, again, just not re recommending that. Um, the thing that we did want to just highlight, um, again, what I what we suggested last year was an early closure on Thursday, July 3rd. Um, Fourth of July is a big holiday in Lake Bluff. There is a lot of preparation um, for this holiday in terms of the streets, the people, a lot, thing, a lot of things going on. What we saw this year was our first time closing at five. Um, we did not see much traffic really at all in the afternoons. Um, the managers and I did have a discussion. Do we want to close at one? Do we want to close at five? Um, and I recommended because of access, because so many of our hours are inaccessible. I said, well, let's just try to stay open. And if people aren't using us, that's okay. But at least we can show um, that we are available to the community if need be. Um, so our usage stats were pretty low during those last few hours, but um, I would rather us stay open for a full day. And then again, it doesn't mean that the board would have to pay staff for that paid holiday. So staff could still work a full day or they could take their own time, um, but we would be open um, almost a full day. Um, anything else that I wanted to highlight? Um, I just wondered why you left, put the Sundays in because we're, that was probably before we made the decision to. So um, when they're a holiday, we add them on our website just to make sure that people know that. Okay. But you're yeah. correct. We're closed every Sunday anyway. Um, but just for additional information to gotcha. the public, we wanted to highlight them on this list too. Um, but we wanted to see what the conversation was with the modified hours pilot. And now that we know that, that information will just say closed all Sundays and then it will have this list. We're proposing our staff in service on Friday, November 14th. Um, we uh, have already started talking about possible topics for staff in service, or, um, but I fully trust the staff to put together a very wonderful, engaging day. Is there a staff in service scheduled for November of 2024? Oh yeah, that's what I was referring to. So we've already started talking about that. The board voted to close. I don't have that date off the top of my head, but that is already integrated into our calendar. So thank you board for supporting that day of professional development. Can you remind me, was the day before Thanksgiving, was this the first year, that that, or last year, was that the first year, is that historical? That has been historical, okay. yes. Okay. Every library is a little different, but yeah. here it has been historical. And the day after, I remember you saying you liked something about you, you liked working the day after Thanksgiving. Oh, I love yeah. working the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. <laughs> I remember being home. Yeah, <laughs> me personally, yeah. I do, yeah. And actually a lot of libraries see increased amount of traffic the day after Thanksgiving. There are you know, grandparents in town, taking the kids out to give the parents a break. Yes. <laughs> Any other questions about the proposed library closing dates for next calendar year? Is there a motion? I will move to approve the library closing dates for 2025 as written. Thank you, Trustee Friedman. Is there a second? I will second. Thank you, Trustee George. Um, voice vote? All those in the Oh, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, no. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Abstention. Okay. Fabulous. We have, that is adopted. All right. Um, actually, you would you wouldn't mind leading on the next one, Allie. I would appreciate it. Give me a break. Yeah, we have an update um, about the current status of the new IGA with the village. We had another meeting with them um, prior to our special meeting, but after our last regular board meeting, the current status is that we are waiting on the village to come back with numbers. Um, in general, the business terms had been agreed upon, um, but there was discrepancy between the actualized cost of uh, the museum being a tenant in the building and what was proposed in the new IGA. Um, we requested that they go back. Um, they are going to come back with new numbers for us to consider. They do have actualized costs of constructive recurring and one-time costs, um, so they have all the information, and we have not yet heard back. However, that just I can reach out to them and see if we have the Um The hope is, obviously today is a September board meeting, but the hope would be that the IGA comes in front of the board in October to be signed. Um, and within that IGA, there is um, both the current fiscal year's contribution as well as last year's contribution that has not been dispersed yet, and a back payment on water bills that the library has paid uh, that was not supposed to, or had been agreed upon to be paid. So uh, there would be three individual payments lumped into one, in addition to the other pieces, which include things like audit after our accounting services. Um, so you will hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on the wood that we have that agreement ready for everyone to review with the final numbers. My recommendation is to, prior to the board's review, have it shared with our attorney. I know we talked about that, but just, you know, for everybody here. And um, yeah, hopefully it could be October. One thing I'll add is that um, the, uh, uh, the topic of the external lights and the repairs that were made, um, what, nine months ago? It might already be. Yeah, almost a year. It's been a while. Um, continue to come up. And uh, so at the next Building and Grounds Committee, uh, that topic, or maybe Renee, you can provide a, a summary and a go forward recommendation to the Building and Grounds Committee because I don't think they're meeting this week. No. Yeah. Um, so, so unless so the A, sorry, and what I'm referring to, just to be clear, is the. Um, a submission needs to be made to the ARB regarding the lighting. A submission needs to be made, but they do not approve of our existing lighting. They have recommended changing the lighting, and that is where we currently are. What I had said to them when this talk, when we talked about it, was the lighting that was recommended was outside of our cost point, mm -hmm. um, based on their person that they recommended I work with, Brian Runner. Um, and so one of the things that we discussed was let's firm up the IGA first, because at one point that was on the negotiating table, mm -hmm. that is no longer on the negotiating table. Um, and so I think there is, I mean, the library can move forward with replacing the lighting. That will still need to go to the ARB. But we need to work with Hinkle Electrician to identify a new fixture that meets our price point. It might need to go to the board, depending on how expensive all of that is. Um, it sounds like there's interest in helping us, to, helping the library decide what the hours of the lights being on are based on previous conversations. Um, that is managed all in house. I will update David as much as I can before Friday, but I will lean on the building and grounds committee to work with David on that. You know where to find me if you need me. Okay. Um, anything, any other questions, comments about IGA? Uh, that takes us to the 2024-25 Lake Bluff Library Work Plan. 
So Adobe was funny for me this uh, month. If you just skip ahead to the next um, pack and the next section, which is section 14 and then 15 to go back. Um, you may remember last year was the first year this library had an annual work plan. The goal of that was to operationalize um, and prioritize work of the staff in various areas of the library, since we currently in the interim don't have a long range plan in action. Um, and that can, can be something that the new director um, and the long range planning committee and the board um, explore going forward. Um, but having a work plan helps staff. It helps staff prioritize. It helps um, someone like David who is coming on to know what the heck is going on at this library? What do you all want to do? Um, and so there's a lot of work already happening. And so um, I've worked with the management team and they worked with their staff to identify the work, the known work and the proposed work that will happen sometime this year. As you saw at the end of last fiscal year, we provided a completed annual work plan. Some things didn't get uh, done and that's okay. They might have um, found their way onto this year's work plan. Um, some things were completed or some things were deprioritized entirely. Um, you'll see some new items that were added. Um, I just want to thank uh, our technology manager, Anthony, who has helped us identify some really crucial, important work this year for our technology infrastructure. And the, the work plan itself is categorized by the, um, the areas of work, not only in my job description, um, but also in the various um, uh, job descriptions of the management team and staff. So um, I think last year, I remember the conversation was, wow, this is a big annual work plan. And at the same time, I think the board also commended the staff, which I echo on how much was actually completed. And so a lot of this work is going to happen or is already happening. Um, and so I wanted to present this to you. I wanna thank the management team for hustling to get this done before I left. I think this is crucial for someone like David. I think this is crucial for the new um, permanent director to walk in and see a plan already in place. Um, you know, the first plan under administrative and administration and personnel is hire an onboard and interim director. And based on tonight's vote, you've already done that. And so um, the staff will work with uh, David and then eventually the permanent director on um, assessing these. Um, and it, as always, things ebb and flow, things change as new staff come in. Um, so I think this is a fantastic uh, roadmap ahead for the organization um, to move forward. Happy to answer any questions. Questions on the work plan. Okay, hearing none, we'll move into library correspondence. Um, as you know, I typically include um, any press that the library is in. So you'll see several articles. Um, Correspondence 4 is actually a lovely compilation of compliments for our staff. Um, several of them are named. Um, and I just want to acknowledge Claire and Katie um, and then all staff um, for being, uh, again, Claire, um, which is wonderful. We'll be sure to share this with Claire. Um, for being the asset to the community that several of these people are talking about. You do great work, staff, and um, David is lucky to be able to work with you, I think. Um, I also wanted to highlight a brand new report coming out from Rails. As you may remember, we are a member of Rails reaching out across Illinois library systems. Um, I think this is a really important advocacy document. Um, I think this is really helpful for trustees to understand how libraries impact communities. I think there are data points here um, that could be used when talking to a local organization about broadly how Illinois libraries support the state, but also, um, you know, I love the section, how do libraries compare to amazon.com? I mean, these are really well thought out, um, kind of um, buzzwordy type of um, conversation points that you all as trustees can bring into the community. Um, but then also it reflects the great work that our Rails, um, our system Rails does and supports us. Um, so a copy of that report is in here that was just released a couple weeks ago. And then um, 
you know, you all have heard me. I'm such a proponent of training. I've shared resources with you all in different ways. Um, I think Jamie is going to a fundraising training through the, um, is that through the chamber? Yeah, so Janie registered for that. Thank you, Janie. Um, I've also included information about um, a division of ALA, the American Libraries Association, called United for Libraries. And so if any of the trustees would like to take part in any of these trainings, feel free. We have a professional development fund line, and we would be happy to support you all with online learning and topics of things that you are interested in. Um, and so I wanted to include that, as well as the last page, which is our beautiful flyer posted around the community. Thank you, Sandy. Oh, well, thank you, Eric. I saw it in Bluffington's today. Um, and in our in our vestibule and our front doors. And um, so please, I think there's already conversations happening about potential candidates, um, which is wonderful. Four positions will be up for uh, re-election. I believe um, Matt Dowdy and our president, Bonnie Shaw, will be um, running again. Um, and since this is my last time, thank you to Bill Hayes, our treasurer, and thank you to Jenny Graziano for acting as our trustee. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the correspondence? Okay. Is exact is executive session needed? Okay. Um, that takes us to any and all other business which may come may properly come before the board. Um, I just want to close out and say thank you, Renee. Um, you know, a lot of change, a lot of very positive change has happened in the last, again, I think it's 20 months, <laughs> 21. Um, and as I've said to other people in the community, you know, Renee's really helped to transform this organization, the board, the staff, and I think has really broadened the understanding, um, the, 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 has broadened the community's understanding of some of the challenges that the library face faces. I think a lot of people kind of just think the library's, you know, doing just fine, they're open, books on the shelves. Um, but I think Renee has done a lot to advance so many different facets of the library here in Lake Park. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, good luck. Thank Good you. Luck with your next role. Thank you so much. Stop by anytime. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So, okay. Thank you, Trustee Jurt, at 9837. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Trustee Jardine. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, good evening, everyone.